Hello, everybody. I hope you're well. Just reminding you to go out and vote tomorrow, exercise those uh, uh, civil rights and uh, civil obligations. Um, so today, I just quickly wanted to talk about uh, this powerful microcosm of New Mexican Chicana Chicano rock and the origins um, and this incredible occurrence right here on, on the high deserts of Nuevo Mexico um, <clears throat> that kind of occurred simultaneous with Califas, with California, and uh, with Texas, with San Antonio mainly, all the way down to El Paso. There were these amazing emergences of rock and roll uh, played uh, in that Latino style. Uh, just an amazing, uh, powerful, and uh, and unique sound. Uh, so we're going to uh, learn a little bit about the Nuevo Mexicano expression of all of that, um, which I think is undersung and undercovered and uh, underdocumented. So uh, I uh, really am excited to bring this to uh to all of you amazing students in this amazing course. So talking a little bit about the New Mexico Chicana, Chicano rock origins, okay? So of course, going back to the far roots and why we get certain sounds that we do as we have throughout this course. Uh, the New Mexico Latino rock has its origins in ancient uh, Puebloan, uh, Mexicano, uh, of course, later country, and then the blues, of course, uh, that came out of the South, and uh, initially West Africa, uh, R&B, uh, rockabilly, and of course, the what uh, is deemed the Spanish New Mexican sound. Uh, the blending of these uh, traditional ranchera corrido with the new sounds of uh, Tejanos like Little Joe or the Californians like Carlos Santana, uh, blended with a unique desert rock and cruising down central sound uh, from the early 1960s through the mid 1970s is kind of essentially what we're going to be covering and, and looking at in terms of origins. Now, obviously, some of this stems from the latter part of the 50s, but really, really, the scene kind of took off uh, the early part of the 60s. And it's interesting because in New Mexico, there really is kind of, a, I guess, essentially, uh, you could uh, kind of pseudo name it, uh, sort of a royal family of, uh, of, uh, of rock and what eventually turned into the New Mexico sound here in New Mexico and a lot of what we're going to learn uh, about the origins stem from uh, one family. It's pretty amazing. Um, so we're going to, we're going to deem it the Route 66 scene and, uh, and we're going to see how the Route 66 is the, an important, such an important highway when it comes to that uh, historical ability for Americans to travel from coast to coast. Uh, but also the, uh, you know, that's when traditions and um, ideas begin to really travel at a faster pace and the microcosm started to connect with each other. So the LA uh, sound was connecting all the way to Texas. And of course, New Mexico, as uh, Tijerina called us, was the Indo, Indo Hispano, meaning uh, sort of like the uh, Indo uh, continent um, in, in Southwest Asia is where everything crosses. Whew goes through okay so this sim it was simultaneous with the emerging uh, east la whittier boulevard is what they called it scene um nuevo mexico of course uh, its own microcosm uh, of chicana chicano rock and roll revolution so i'm going to start with one uh, what i call pinnacle figure and his name was uh tiny more his name was amador sanchez um and he was actually born up north, New Mexico, uh, in a place called Ojo Sarco. That's up near Dixon. That's up past Pecos, way up in the kind of hilly uh, country up there. And this is uh, back in 1940 that uh, he was born. 
And he was known for spearheading that uh, New Mexico music uh, in the 1960s and 70s, along with his brothers, Al Hurricane. I think you've probably heard that name. And Baby Gaby, uh, as well as his contribution to the rock uh, I'm sorry, Route 66 style, that rockabilly meets Americana rock and roll. Uh, so he wrote uh, for artists like Tommy G and the Charms and uh, wrote a lot of hit singles for other people. Uh, I Know What I Want was one of them, and that was a, a minor hit in the early 60s. And I Want You So Bad. So a lot of these other artists that were out in the mainstream we're singing his material. Uh, Tiny Moore is really the genius songwriter behind New Mexico rock and roll, uh, Chicano rock and roll. Uh, he also contributed, of course, heavily to the Nuevo Mexicano and Chicano uh, uh, sound uh, with his own music uh, that he recorded. Uh, so some of his songs were Everybody Rocks <laughs> and Bernadine. I mentioned that to my dad. Uh, when I was doing, I was doing a little kind of oral history gathering on this, and he started singing it for me. So the, this whole Bernadine uh, uh, song was a real big hit, uh, and he was kind of a kid of the, he was in high school the latter part of the 50s. Um, so uh, as well as several contributions to, of course, the classic Norteño, Nuevo Mexicano, Rancherita. Uh, he wrote the song La del Monio Colorado, which was made uh, very famous recently by uh, to, uh, Tobias René, Tobias René, and old songs called Sangre de Indio and Carmelita, just a prolific writer. Uh, so when many people think of the New Mexico, of the New Mexico sound of New Mexico music, they often think of Al Hurricane, but the man behind much of that writing, including uh, Al's uh, material, uh, was uh, this man named Tiny Mori Amador Sanchez. Uh, so I'm going to play a little bit of that sound. And as you'll notice, you know, we generally associate kind of the Al Hurricane sound and uh, uh, what kind of emerged uh, more with uh, uh, sort of a blending into a, a Mexicano, uh, regional, norteño, rancherita sound. But really, this all stems from rock and roll. And these guys, uh, as, as youngins, were just super into, into rock and roll. That's what they wanted to play. But as you will hear, what was unique was they were weaving in these amazing Chicano elements, uh, like the horns, of course, you know. So they were taking those roots that they'd heard, the saxophone being played in the old, uh, you know, son huastecos and different things that were, that were uh, coming up north into uh, Nuevo Mexico from the time they were little kids. So... I want you to hear, it's uh, it's such a cool old rock and roll sound. This is a minor hit for him. It went down to El Paso, went into the Tejano scene, and even hit in the California scene. So uh, back then there were kind of uh, more regional um, hits. And so in the Southwest, this was uh, what you could call a top 10 hit at one point in uh, 62, I believe. Please don't take advantage of my love There is someone looking from above Darling, you know you can make me cry Please don't take advantage, please don't try Okay, so I just want to play a little bit for you. You guys, please look this stuff up. It'll be on the uh, included on the uh, PowerPoint that we're going to include on this on this little mini lecture. Uh, so Tiny Mori uh, and the song is called "Please Don't Take Advantage." 
<laughs> so, uh, you know, Richie Valens and some of the huge names that we know about, really, they took their cues from these early recordings, from these early guys making it in their regional areas. Uh, so Tiny Mori, Nuevo Mexico, uh, Legendario, uh, Leyende, Legend. Okay. So, of course, we have to, uh, if we're going to talk about New Mexico uh, music and New Mexico rock and roll in its, uh, in its origins, we've got to talk about uh, Mr. Al Hurricane. Uh, he was born Alberto uh, Nelson Sanchez, and he was from Dixon. So I think he was born a little bit later than his, than his older brother, uh, Tiny uh, Ramador. And so I think they had moved to Dixon at that point. Uh, and of course, he's known as the godfather of New Mexico music, uh, musical performer. And of course, for approximately half a century, his mu music has remained influential since the rock and roll era and uh, well through the of, into the modern era. And of course, we just recently lost him uh, in 2017. Uh, of course, we know him for his rancherita, polka, country, uh, and sort of swinging uh, style, you know, that was that stuff we heard at, at the weddings growing up, um, and at the fiestas, you know, all those, all those special occasions uh, where we uh, would convene as, as a community. Uh, but if you really listen to the music, there's always rock and roll present and R&B. And so the sound was where he originated. And what I want to do first is play this sound. And he was really well known uh, for his contributions to the guitar. So this guy was playing uh, with the likes of... Uh, he toured with uh, Chubby Checker. He worked with Dick Dale, who was like the surf guitar sound. So he had this, this hot sounding guitar. So before he even started putting his voice down, he always said he didn't, he didn't really like his voice. Uh, he was a guitarist. And so here's this compilation album and it's called Early Teenage Rockers. Uh, this was actually a, a pretty big hit throughout the country. And so everyone learned that name, Al Hurricane. They didn't even know he was Chicano. Uh, they didn't know he was Mexicano, Americano, Hispano, Latino. Uh, at that time, people were hiding their identity. So Al Hurricane could have been, you know, some, some cat from, uh, uh, who knows, Des Moines, Des Moines, Iowa, that, uh, you know, went to the city to, to play his guitar and uh, or play her guitar you know unfortunately it was a very male dominated uh, era of music uh, so let me play this it's just really cool it's almost sounds like this surf rock you know it's really cool stuff so let me play this for you this is Al Hurricane <laughs> Okay, so this is being danced to at, uh, at, the, at the Saw Cops, you know. Uh, this is uh, way back in 61 uh, that this was released. Uh, and so this was uh, interesting. These are the origins of our hurricane. Uh, he's better known, of course, and this is uh, his, one of his big hits called Puño de Tierra. 
and he's more known for this sound that I'm sure uh, most of you've heard. la vida no más recorriendo el mundo si quieren que se los diga yo soy un alma sin dueño a mí no me falta nada para mí la vida es un sueño ok um But that sound really didn't start emerging until the latter part of the 70s or mid, mid through latter part of the 70s. Uh, and that's when that, uh, you know, all of those sounds started to uh, sort of uh, uh, conglomerate uh, into uh, what became the Nuevo Mexicano sound or what uh, many people call the Spanish sound. Um, all of this was being played on uh, KQEO oldies so it was this station that these local these local kids could could if they could find a way to to raise enough money to record they could take, sorry about that they could take their uh they could take their recordings in and get it played on the radio the next day you know so radio and and being able to get your stuff out there wasn't uh, so hard. The hard thing was getting a recording that uh, sounded decent at that time. But uh, people were much more connected with each other. It wasn't some realm off uh, in you know the record company land that uh, no one could access. There was a lot of this amazing local stuff going on. And these guys would pack the houses, uh, which I'm gonna tell you about. Uh, and when I say pack the house, I mean a place called the Civic Auditorium. And we're gonna learn about uh, that being kind of the pinnacle of the Albuquerque uh, Chicano rock uh, origins, the Civic Auditorium, ladies and gentlemen. It's now torn down, but it was right by where uh, uh, Loveless Hospital is now, what used to be called St. Joseph's Hospital. Al Hurricane and his band in the early 60s. So, of course, three of them are his brothers. <laughs> Uh, and I think the other one's his cousin, you know, so it was a family affair, as they say. Um, so moving on, we're going to kind of look at how this, uh, this explosion uh, kind of emerged from different parts of the city. But of course, the main uh, sort of the, uh, the heart of it was the West Side. Uh, so the West Side hangouts kind of fomented this renaissance uh, where, uh, of course, our hurricane, uh, his son, uh, Al Hurricane Jr., and groups like Los Chavos, uh, who jammed a crazy clever combination of traditional aesthetics with a, a rock sensibility that brought them citywide recognition, which of course was a big deal back then. The entire city would show up for these shows. People were hungry for it. Um, so I'm going to play a little piece uh, on the singer uh, from the Spanish. His name was Rigoberto Trejo. And he was the lead singer for Los Chavos. But this is an introduction that they did. Uh, and it, so a, there's a little bit here about our hurricane and some of his incredible accomplishments as a musician. Rigoberto is uh, doing the tribute to our hurricane in this video. Al I'm going to blow this one up for you. Oops, wait a minute. Hurricane, long known for his world-class guitar playing and singing, has performed not only in the Spanish field, but has also performed for rock, pop, soul, and country audiences across the nation while playing with many major artists. One such artist was Fats Domino. Fats invited Al to play with him, and Al accepted the invitation. He sat in and played guitar with Fats Domino in his band for a period during the time of the 1950s and 60s. Just as Fats Domino did, Al Hurricane has also invited many musicians to sit in with him. One such musician is our next performer, who not only has played with Al, but has clearly earned his place among the most important artists of New Mexico music. Here is the former lead singer for Macho Power USA and for Los Chavos, Rigoberto Trejo. OK, 
Okay, so as you can hear, he's doing more of the, of course, the, what the New Mexico uh, sound is now. Uh, but back in the day with this band, Los Chavos, uh, they, if you can look at them here in this picture, <laughs> they kind of look like, like the Bee Gees from the 70s, you know, they look like they're ready to do, you know, uh, some, some kind of disco songs, which I, they... As I read about and research, that was kind of one of the big things was a lot of funk, you know. So they were incorporating a lot of funk into their rock, uh, a lot of the 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 uh, so Sly and the Family Stone and uh, um, a lot of these uh, Tower of Power, a lot of these bands out of the Bay that were, of course, the Africano roots uh, mixed with the Chicano roots, a band called War. Uh, all of these were mixing. So War did like Cisco Kid and and Low Rider. That's become really really popular. But all these scenes were influencing each other. Okay, so um, I told you I'd uh, get to the Civic Auditorium. Talk about that a little bit. So Civic Auditorium. I, I so this dates me a little bit. When when I was a little kid, I, I don't know. I think they tore this down in the in the eighties at some point. Uh, but I remember my parents driving by and we were Berlin kids. So coming to Albuquerque was like, boom, coming to New York City, you know, it was the big town for us. And I just remember going by this huge dome uh, by the freeway. And my, my dad used to tell me, he thought, you know, we used to, we used to go to the dances there. We used to dance every Sunday afternoon, he said. I said, every Sunday afternoon we used to dance? That's when the whole, every town had representatives there to dance with each other. And that's where we go to meet all the pretty girls to dance. And my mom would hit him in the shoulder. <laughs> um, so from the late 50s uh, to the early 70s, every Sunday afternoon, the Civic Center, downtown, huge auditorium. Just to get an idea, guys, I'm going to show you who's played there. But uh, we're talking everyone from... Uh, Janis Joplin to Led Zeppelin played at the Civic Auditorium. Um, so it gives you an idea of how packed this place would get for local bands, okay? So uh, from the 50s to the early 70s, every Sunday afternoon, uh, the Civic Center downtown Burke would light up with the sounds of Chicano rock and roll. Swing, jiving, jitterbug, skirts flying in the air, the pachuco shake, they used to call it. So that so the so that's when everyone would come together and there were certain songs. So like uh, Angel Baby uh uh by by Rosie out of uh Los Angeles, you know, it was a dum 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 So it was that was that certain sound and that was that 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 uh with the kind of Chicano Renaissance is what they were calling it. Um was happening right there in that Civic Auditorium. Um, people were driving from Texas, Colorado, Arizona, uh, and throughout the state of New Mexico just to hear the sounds and dance to the sounds of Nuevo Mexico. Uh, Freddie Fender, so really famous uh, kind of country star, uh, uh, Chicano star out of Texas, out of the Texas scene came uh, to the Civic Auditorium and of course, uh, all the uh, kind of the founders, uh, Tiny Mori, uh, Freddie Fender was there, Baby Gaby on sax, and Al Hurricane was in the white suit. Apparently he didn't make this picture um, behind the, the, the mic stand. Uh, so this is uh, 1975 in Civic Auditorium. Freddie Fender is considered one of the uh, pinnacle uh, Chicano artists in the United States. Uh, I think he uh, went triple platinum uh, like three times with, uh, uh, I think now to date with uh, some of his early recordings. So people are still listening and buying his music. Um, so one thing I have to mention is that I've got some more digging to do. I, as your professor, have more research to do because it's hard to dig this stuff up. There has not been enough documentation. 
But so far in my research, I have not been able to uncover enough about the women in the movement and in the scene at the time. Uh, it was, as I said, primarily a, a male dominated scene, unfortunately, but I know I'm gonna uncover more. I did wanna uh, feature at least one a female artist, her name was Glo uh, Gloria Pol. Pol is actually an old uh, Hispanic New Mexico name, uh, or Hispanicized, I should say. Um, and she was one of the most important women in Chicana, Chicana rock and roll and Musica Nova Mexicana, uh, working with her husband, Tiny Mori. So she was married to uh, Tiny Mori. Um, and I'm going to give you a little idea of what. <laughs> Okay, so her music was being played throughout the Southwest as well, uh, in fact, throughout the country. And uh, it's interesting because uh, Gloria and Tiny are actually the parents to international sensation Sparks and uh, Lorenzo Antonio. So we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Freddie Brown, another sound. Uh, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna keep you too long on this lecture, but I want you to hear. <laughs> So I wanted you to hear that guitar style. So that's where, you know, we're hearing these old, the old Mexicano sounds meeting rock and roll and swing and rockabilly. Uh, Cause if you really look at old rockabilly like Dwight Yoakam and uh, uh, even the Reverend uh, uh, Horton Heat out of Texas, more modern bands, there's a certain, uh, swing style that they were playing incorporating into these old Mexicano sounds. So I just wanted you to hear how Freddie Brown was an, uh, a big influence. I also wanted to uh, kind of uh, teach you about Christie Records. There's this old shop on 4th Street. The sign is still there and it's been there since the late, uh, since the early 50s and it's called Christie Records. And they were the guys who were going out and finding all these jewels, these gems, in the bars, in the, in the dives throughout Burke and Belen and up north in Puerto Penasco and all over New Mexico. And they were taking them into a studio and recording them and making these little 45s that would go out by the hundreds. And all the kids would be listening to them, and then they got to go dance to them over at the Civic, uh, at the Civic Auditorium. Christie Records, uh, uh, a New Mexico staple. They're right there down by uh, Barella's Coffee House. So anytime you get to check them out, go to Fourth Street, go in there and support them. Go buy an old, they have CDs, <laughs> which is obsolete now anyway, but you're supporting uh, New Mexico music if you walk into a place like that. Okay. So uh, kind of to just uh, put it into perspective and wrap it up, um, looking at that Route 66, what we're going to call our Route 66 uh, scene, okay, as opposed to the uh, Tejano scene, which is Little Joe and all those guys who were hitting it huge, uh, and of course the Whittier Boulevard East LA scene, which is where, uh, from where uh, bands like Malo and Tierra, uh, and um, Malo, Tierra, um, Oh, there were there were a lot of them, but uh, 
the the young rascals, all these guys, bole bole, bole bole. Okay, that's the whole LA scene. Well, this was the New Mexico scene. So I wanted to take a, a look back in where we're from and understand the microcosm and its contributions to the larger scene. And it was truly important and uh, shook the earth. Um, they were packing the civic auditorium and really even in the LA scenes or the San Antonio scenes, you know, they were packing the big clubs, but they weren't packing auditoriums. So I wanted to draw attention to that point, to that fact. And that is that um, Al Hurricane, and I put him up with some of the artists that came through the Civic Auditorium here in Albuquerque, uh, namely uh, Led Zeppelin. I mean, you know, Stairway to Heaven, just one of the most, of course, legendary rock bands to ever uh, play the stage. Uh, Janis Joplin you know, played on that same stage. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis played on that same stage. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, Jimi Hendrix, oh, lost it, played on that same stage. And then I'm gonna come over with my cursor here. It says, uh, coming coming uh, Civic Auditorium, Tuesday, September 29th, 1971. Giant Mexican Spectacular, Miguel Aceveras Mejia, Lucha Villa, Cornelio Reina. Okay, now these were acts coming up from Mexico. And then, of course, in big letters, the Al Hurricane Show. Okay, and they packed the joint just as much as Led Zeppelin packed the joint. Okay, so that's important to know that there was a powerful, thriving, vibrant scene here in the through the uh, late 50s all the way through the mid 70s. Um, that we can call the origins of New Mexican Chicano, Chicana rock. And I want to end with uh, our international uh, New Mexican stars, Sparks. Um, I remember when I lived in El Salvador, uh, I, when I first heard them hit, uh, they hit throughout Latino America and España and Portugal. So they are known throughout the world, ladies and gentlemen. They pack... They played with the biggest names in uh, throughout Latin America, Thalia, Mana, you name it. And they're from right here, Nuevo Mexico. And the, and here's where we, I talked about that royal family kind of thing. I don't, I don't like throwing that term around. I feel like it's a, a pejorative or it's, a, you know, a demeaning in a sense. I, I don't want to subscribe to that old uh, Eurocentric uh, notion of royalty, but in the sense of just musical uh, ability and prowess and and hard work, uh, hard work, just the old-fashioned ethic to work. Um, Sparks, um, and that's uh, Cristina, Carolina, Angelina, uh, Rosa Maria, uh, Sanchez. So, of course, I love their last name. Um, I always say they're my primas. Um, but they are known throughout the world and uh, they um, have uh, many, many gold records. Um, and they are also, uh, if you just look them up, look up Sparks, look up their, their material and it's fantastic. Their harmonies are second to none. They're incredible. And they, um, they um, you look at their videos and they're getting, you know, six, seven million hits, okay? So uh, this is uh, Nueva Mexicana uh, ladies uh, uh, from right here on uh, our high desert. So I wanted to feature them last as a vindication uh, for the women, for the females in the industry, uh, because as I said, unfortunately it was a very male dominated thing um, in the early emergence and, and in the roots. And so I wanted to feature the fact that really in the end, the most uh, successful New Mexican sound or uh, New Mexican group um, in terms of uh, the Chicano sound has been, uh, have been women and they are sparks. So thank you so much.
uh, for spending some time with me. Todos, muchas gracias. Uh, que lo pases bien. Go out and vote tomorrow, please. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this presentation on the New Mexico origins of Chicano, Chicana rock and roll. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>